Yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's a very interesting topic. And, you know, there were many trials presented uh, from great uh, colleagues and investigators. So what we did is that uh, we were able to analyze data from the SITS registry. So SITS is an international registry. So we're able to take a closer look to this registry and analyze observational data uh, from patients that they were receiving tenecteplase and some other that were receiving alteplase. So we're able to match those ones that they got tenecteplase to the ones that they got uh, alteplase and compare their outcomes. So that was like the study in a nutshell. So yeah, we found some interesting findings. Uh, so first of all, we found that patients that, that they got an ectoplase, they did better than the ones that they got at alteplase, lower mortality rates, and no different in the bleeding risks in the brain. And we are talking about symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage. So the risk of bleeding in the brain to be associated also with a neurological decline. Uh, and that was like really interesting to see in, uh, in this data set. Yeah, so I, I can tell you also about the AX study. I'm based in Canada, so I was happy to participate in the, in the AX study. So AX study proved the non-inferiority of tenecteplase compared to alteplase. It was a very pragmatic uh, randomized clinical trial. So I think now going back home, we need to digest the results of the AX trial and also the other trials presented. And I'm hoping that will change our clinical practice and consider using uh, tenecteplase as an alternative to alteplase. At least for patients with last breast occlusion, I think it's reasonable. We have the evidence now.